Welcome to the Leadership Transformation Hub, your premier destination for unlocking the full potential of leadership excellence. In this dynamic space, we strive to empower and inspire leaders like you to navigate the ever-evolving landscape of success. Presenting the newest installment of our podcast, Ask Better Questions, hosted by the charismatic Peter Adams. Join us as we delve into the world of transformative leadership. Without further ado, let's embark on this enlightening journey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another insightful episode of Ask Better Questions. I'm your host, Peter Adams, and today we embark on a journey deep into the intricate world of executive vision and the challenges faced by our unsung heroes, the middle managers. This podcast is brought to you by Colorful Solutions. Check them out in the links in the description. Now, my background is a little bit unconventional. In my early 20s, I was an accountant at PwC. I just graduated uni. My exposure to business was mostly highly positioned executives. I learned quickly that what I learned in university wasn't relevant to executives. They didn't want to get bogged down in the minutia. They wanted the directional approach, what's impacting direction. Uh, so typically, you start at the bottom, grow competent, work your way up the business to an executive position. You pass through more management and learn as you climb. I started at the top level. And over time, I worked at all levels in a number of organizations. Now, what I found was when there was no driving vision, there were significant systemic problems in that organization. Um, employees, management, they faced those on the day-to-day -day and they were all consuming. But we'll get to that in a moment. Before we dive into the heart of the matter, let's set the stage. Imagine a vast corporation, a ship navigating through complex waters of business at the helm the visionary executives chart a course towards success. Yet there exists a chasm between these strategic brilliance and the day-to-day -day execution on the ground. So meet our protagonists now. Picture this, the executives, captains steering the ship and the middle managers, the engine room, the crew tasked with turning vision into reality. In today's narrative, we unravel the reasons behind the struggle the leadership chasm that hinders seamless execution. The leadership chasm isn't just a gap. It's a complex web of challenges. To truly understand that, let's explore the first layer, misalignment, okay? So misalignment in executive vision. In the corporate tapestry, misalignment is the thread that can unravel the entire fabric. Imagining an, imagine, if you will, an executive envisaging a 30% growth in market share, while middle management focus on cost cutting to meet short-term goals and metrics like KPIs. Now, I can't begin to count the number of organizations where I found this misalignment. One company I worked for was proudly customer focused. <clears throat> the executives were all focused on customers and how to grow the business and making sure we had the best experience for customers. However, the middle management were almost entirely focused on streamlining the process to the detriment of actual customer experience. Now, all the metrics were heading in the right direction. We had customer growth, we had more customers signing on, but we weren't holding on to customers and our retention was declining month by month. We were having customers for less and less time. Um, basically, the battle was lost before it began. The delegation of trust within the customer facing team had been whittled to almost nothing. The structure of customer interactions was so formalized that anything resembling a positive customer experience had been completely removed in exchange for faster closure, shorter handling times. As I said before, the metrics had been greatly improved, but the customer retention was tanking. And sadly, this was only discovered when an executive's wife called in and experienced the customer quote unquote service firsthand. Only after this incident were the metrics used by leadership or the leadership team were they revisited and significantly changed. So 
many of these metrics were completely removed and the customer service function was removed from the outsourcing company who had been handling it and brought back completely in-house. Um, you, you know that something has gone wrong when not only did you lose the contract, but they brought it back in-house. Um, it was a case of misalignment of they got paid for performance and the performance hadn't factored in appropriately or adequately customer retention and customer experience. So there are a lot of other examples, you know, market expansion versus cost cutting. Um, the executive vision could be, you know, uh, expanding the company's market presence globally or, or just within a, within a region. Whereas the middle managers might be focusing on short term goals, prioritizing cost cutting, uh, meeting quarterly financial targets. The misalignment here can hinder the necessary investments in strategic initiatives required for international expansion. Um, you could have an innovation emphasis at the top level, and yet further down the tree, you have a risk aversion. Uh, you know, if you've got a risk aversion, it's very difficult to innovate. Um, you know, executives, you know, emphasizing a culture of innovation to stay ahead of com in, a, in a competitive landscape, and yet middle managers, uh, you know, due to concerns about short term performance, resist allocating resources to experimental projects. And this misalignment stifles creativity, hampers the organization's ability to change, you know, to market trends, but also will impact the cultural impact. So if you've got a culture of risk aversion, it's very difficult to then stream, you know, kickstart some innovation at that. Anyone who comes with an innovative idea is generally shut down and it never reaches past middle management, let alone to the executive level. Then you can have, as I described above, the customer-centric strategy plus an internal process optimization, which is as described, you know, they, they want to transform the com company into customer-centric, um, non-process driven, but just a great experience for every customer. But yet, if you shut out the ability of your staff to service those customers by locking down your processes into mu the mundane um, and, and just being systematic with everyone, then customers will tell you to go take a long walk off a short pier. Um, there's also long-term sustainability versus, you know, the obvious quarterly profits and goals. You know, the executive team might be committed to building a sustainable business model with long-term growth and have long-term plans. Whereas the middle managers pressured by quarterly profit goals may resort to short-term tactics that compromise the long-term stability of the business. This misalignment jeopardizes the company's ability to weather economic fluctuations. Also, it's questionable ethically in terms of short-termism, um, but a lot of businesses run on quarterly numbers. Um, we're not hitting our quarterly numbers. What's going on here? And we all know we've, we've worked for businesses like that. And if you haven't, you are very lucky. Um, there could also be employee development as a organizational goal, whereas you know, the middle managers might have immediate productivity as their goal. And so, you know, the executive might be prioritizing investments in employee development to build skilled and engaged workforces, but the middle managers under pressure to deliver immediate results may neglect employee training and development initiatives. This misalignment impacts the employee morale, long-term organizational capability, uh, can stifle the uh, the culture in the business because of the misalignment between what's stated as the goal and what the actual outcome is. In each of those examples, the misalignment between executive vision and management execution can lead to a lack of coherence in strategy implementation, impeding the organization's overall success. Now, bridging those gaps requires effective communication, a shared understanding of priorities, and the strategic alignment across all levels of the organization. In a word, leadership. Now let's use some concrete examples here because um, without naming names, consider company X. Now this could be any one of a number of companies I've worked for and I've worked for several, um, where the executive team dreams of expansion, but the middle managers are grappling with outdated systems that hinder just performance as it is currently, let alone measuring an expanded workforce. We've all worked for companies that have IT systems that are limiting their expansion and their ability to grow in its existing form. And updating IT systems can cause enormous stress on an organization. 
um, finding the right system, finding a system that works, making sure it rolls out seamlessly, all of those things I've been involved in and I've been fortunate enough to be involved in a lot of IT system upgrades. Um, so in order to avoid catastrophe in those situations, the management team need to tell the executive team, your current systems are inadequate. But that is unlikely to happen because it's not the information that the executive want to hear. It's the ex it's it's a it's a situation where communication is imperative to avoid catastrophe. Executives may not want to hear it, but they need to hear it. And it takes bravery and courage at all levels in an organisation, both executives and managers, to understand what the limitations are. So. Bridging that gap, practical solutions here. All right, so now we've uncovered the layers of the leadership chasm. Let's discuss how to bridge that gap. Percentages can illustrate the potential impact of strategic alignment on key performance indicators. A study found that companies with aligned strategies experience a staggering 50% higher annual growth compared to their misaligned counterparts. Think of it as unlocking the hidden potential within the organization. Now, I don't want to bore you with bunches of statistics because people generally tune out, but I will give you three, okay? According to Gartner Research, 77% of executives felt like they are part of something important at their organization. Now, that's obvious because executives are the high level. They are there. They know what they're driving for. They generally set the goals. They know what the importance of achieving the goals and the, you know, the destination dictating direction, they know what they're aiming for. But only 59% of employees feel the same. So there's a misalignment there already. There needs to be a communique and, and communication ongoing, not just a, hey, this is our goal for this year, but a reminder sent regularly. Um, so a study from ResearchScape found that 47% of workers believe some projects fail to meet objectives due to alignment issues, and 46% express annoyance or frustration as a result of that misalignment. That's very nearly half your workforce. But I think the most telling one, and this is a study from MIT that shows that only 28% of executives and middle managers responsible for executing strategy could list their company's strategic priorities. These are the people that are responsible for setting and achieving the company's strategic priorities, and they don't know what they are. That's, that's like almost a third. And that percentage actually decreases the further down the reporting line you look. So MIT found that less than, th less than a third of executives could name what the strategic priorities were, and when you look down an organization, that, that number shrinks the further down you go. Now, I can understand the janitorial staff not knowing where the company's going, but your operational middle managers should know these things. In essence, strategic alignment isn't a luxury, but a strategic imperative for sustained success. So, I guess as we conclude this storytelling journey, through the leadership chasm, remember the success of any ship lies in the seamless coordination between its captain and crew. Strategic alignment isn't a buzzword. It's the compass guiding us through turbulent business waters. We all know businesses that are not strategically aligned. And sadly, we've all worked for many of them. But if you are in charge of a business, your job isn't just setting the strategic direction. I mean, it should be, um, that is part of your job. It's a big part of your job, but it's also making sure that everyone else in the organization knows what the goal is and is pulling in the same direction. So thank you again for joining us on this exploration of leadership dynamics. Stay tuned for more episodes um, where we delve into the intricacies of the corporate landscape. Until next week, this is Peter Adams signing off and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more practical suggestions and leadership insights.